Rolling. I should have been recording all of our chat before this of how we were like I really should have for us to even get to this point because that start is spot on T I mean this is why we practice everyone this is why we prepare this is why we have interns we do it for you the listeners Uh, that was our third take (laughs) <laughs> yes a charm indeed a charm all the preparation led to this <laughs> <laughs> but i will congratulate you because through this entire moment you didn't use any profanity i thought about it i thought about it with this week's uh topic i did i thought about lighting it up right <laughs> off the bat <laughs> but Maybe a challenge has been put on the table, which 100% I do not believe that you can meet. And what might that challenge be, Dick? Okay. Well, I'm projecting my current life challenge that I'll tell you all a little bit about onto you yes. just for this episode, which is, can we do an entire episode about profanity, in fact, and not actually use any curse words, like not actually swear. <laughs> Maybe you can. <laughs> but you care but more about sure. the quality of the episode, right? <laughs> uh, right, 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 right. And I don't want to confuse any of our listeners. I want them to know exactly what we're talking about. So <laughs> this so- week's topic, of course, is going to be Cursing, profanity, yeah. swearing. Bad right? language, foul language, obscenities, ex- expletives, vulgarism. So many words. Four letter for, words. Four letter words, right? We can spell. And your here. challenge is to discuss this without using any of those. And this stems from a challenge that has been posed to you in your personal life, you said? Yeah. Well, just my whole life at this point. My personal professional life, it's all right. really the same. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant off the show, right? Yeah, this is your off the show. Life, right, right. <laughs> but here's Anything why. that's not here is <laughs> your personal life. Yes, right. <laughs> so this is just retirement, frankly. Um, <laughs> nice. So, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about this, right? I think our listeners know us pretty well, which is we have never been shy with our use of colorful language I don't even know why it's called colorful maybe we'll get into that maybe we won't I'm not sure but nonetheless profanity cursing swear words four letter words and every time we we do that on this show I know that you know as our one man production crew you have to label our episodes you know explicit and so on and so forth we'll talk about that too but I think we've had a couple episodes where you and I have almost gotten to the end of it and been like wow Neither of us use the F word or, wow, we didn't swear through that whole thing. And the reason we're always surprised is because these words are standard in our vocabulary of anybody that knows us. And so maybe I was challenged recently in a really, really polite way. I'll say that, not a profane way. It was a very polite way. That I was challenged. Oh, yeah, this sounds fun. And suggested that I am more intelligent than that type of language when I use those words. And because I'm a very expressive person, and it is not uh, difficult for those words to fly out of my mouth, usually in a very passionate way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) And so it was suggested, hey, You like a good challenge. I do. I do. Try communicating without using those words. And I really had to stop. And I didn't have to stop. I'm not going to lie. I like a good challenge. And I was like, screw you. I can do this. But as I started to actually think about the challenge and take it on and hear what was said to me, I still had a few doubts and questions. Like my first response is always to be defensive. 
and be like, using these words doesn't make me less intelligent. In fact, I will find you 13 studies that show you it makes me more intelligent. And Bam. <laughs> Thank you, Cleveland Clinic. <laughs> right? We were reading that one. And so I did want to have just a whole conversation about these words, why they have the connotation that they do, why we have to list our podcast as explicit when we use them, and maybe explore this challenge of mine and see where we come out at the other end. So to any of our listeners that are interested in this subject or care to follow us, you may find Dick on Twitter at I'm Dick Francisco. You may find me on Twitter at CTS Terry. You can find Dick on Instagram at the Dick Francisco, and you may find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, wherever podcasts are available by searching for the Catch This Guy podcast. Dick, where where do you want to start? See, I want to know your relationship early on as a kid. Was swearing aloud in your house? It was not. It was highly frowned upon. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> so, like, as a kid, being raised in a household that you weren't allowed to swear, did it kind of make you want to do it more? Absolutely. <laughs> I remember a conversation when I was maybe nine or ten. I was really into the word frickin'. Mm. And so, I would use that all the time. And my friends are like, why are you swearing so much? I'm like, I'm saying frickin'. I'm not swearing. And you're an expressive person. So You don't say. <laughs> when when these words in particular that have this connotation that are considered swear words came into your vocabulary and you started using them, what was your relationship with those? Um huh. It's an interesting question, you know. I don't know if anybody ever thinks about it like that, right? Yeah. I think it's something that just develops over time, right? Yeah. I think this is one instance where we could probably start to point to media to some degree because as you're exposed to more explicit content, you're picking up on words that you might not have even have ever heard before, right? And in a context like, that's probably pretty accessible too, like in a song or in a movie line or... Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Yes. So when you're surrounded by people that don't speak like that, and then you begin to be exposed to people that do, you're like, oh, there's different ways of talking, right? Right. And so you, I guess for me, I just found what was more comfortable mm -hmm. because I can express myself a billion different ways. For sure. example, the other day, my father's over helping me with the backsplash, and I cut a piece of tile, and it didn't quite snap right. So I'm just like, fuck! <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so... Pretty oh, sure shit. you just <laughs> lost the challenge, right? Well, <laughs> twice, you did, right? <laughs> you, did, uh, you didn't make it... That, you made it in a good eight minutes. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> but anyway... While there's part of me that knows I could say nothing or perhaps express myself in a way similar to, hey, I'm really angry right now and I'd like to go, I don't know, break some glass or something, <laughs> right? Or I could challenge myself to do what you're doing and say, what the F word or what the fish sticks. Yeah. And to me, that's akin to saying www when it's really shorter to say World Wide web right like what are we doing here let's just cut to the chase you know what would make you more comfortable sir right so <laughs> like, I apologize but that's the and that's the part of me maybe I just need to take that deep breath and say nothing right channel it all inward but that's also where me and my therapist think that I need a, a healthy outlet for all this Ooh. stuff. I need to get back on a fucking hockey team, man. I need to, I need to get out there. I need to play, I need to maybe maybe play some flag football with Jack Torso <laughs> this summer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need he's, to do something. I need to get out there and run around. For it. I think it's now um it's tying tires to your waist and running through the park. I think that's the the newest uh 
Well, regardless, I need something like that. I need more of that in my life as as a good outlet for yeah. some of this energy, right? Because I think through some of our research, we've also established that some of these words are used as a way to express ourselves or maybe to let off some frustration, right? Yeah. You know, anybody ever been cut off in traffic or hit your toe off the end of a coffee table? Yeah. What's the I, first thing that comes to mind, right? Mother. So as we were doing that research, right, we, we found a few different really interesting studies on the psychological uh, functions associated with swearing. Um, one of those studies, right, came out of that Keele University study where swearing actually re relieves the effects of physical pain. And then back to what you said of even having like – a cathartic response to something where you swear to let something out. And so I think it was Steven Pinker had acknowledged five possible functions of swearing. And swearing can be abusive, right? It's like people can use it in a mean way to intimidate or do harm to somebody. Doing it in I that- I think that's how it gets taken more <laughs> often than not. Sorry but to interject. No, that's back to intent. I'm saying how did somebody intend it? And people can intend to be abusive and use swearing to do that, right? Right. Okay. Yep. Cathartic. Right. So that's back to that response to pain or misfortune. Um, there's one. This called... makes me think of when we went to have the tattoo removal done for the first time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, and they were doing the injections. I was like, fuck. Yeah. Oh, just put me down, Dick. Just put me down. And so you Take were using me. that word that has that association for you in a cathartic way, right? So there's uh, emphatic. Old yeller, Dick emphatic swearing so that's when you're intending to draw more attention to something to make it worth paying attention to people will use swearing to do that idiomatic swearing and that's really I think that's in all honesty most of the swearing that you and I have always done it's used for no What's other that? particular purpose but just as conversational and relational between us <laughs> like those words get <laughs> dropped in Almost as placeholders. And I want to come back to them because I think that's where I have actually really appreciated this challenge put before me because I think that mm -hmm. is the type of swearing that was being called out. I'll say that as a as a bad habit on my part. And then there's another one here called dysphemistic swearing. And it's used to convey that the person saying it thinks negatively of a subject matter and it's to make you think negatively of it too. So instead of just saying that woman, if you put the F word in front of that, <laughs> you're gonna know that I think negatively of that woman and so are you. <laughs> but it, I, here's where my question is though. So we can read all these studies, right? Okay, mm -hmm. it's relieves pain and it's expressive and you know, all these five ways of you know, functions of swearing that we talked about. Mm. But I really want to come back to why these words, right? Aren't there other ways of expressing ourselves? Why are these words so deemed vul vulgar? Like, why do we turn to these words? <laughs> I think... <laughs> Sorry, the silence between the two of us. Because <laughs> we're both like, I don't know, because I have zero problem with them. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but thank you for supporting me in my challenge, T. I love you for that. Yes, absolutely. I was going to blame the FCC, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is this is this the time where we mention... Uh, the famous skit by George Carlin, right? Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, like, yeah. it's just the seven words that you can't say on TV. Uh-huh. And, I, again, I guess it's just this council of whoever that decides what words are permissible and not, right? And then that gets permeated through society. Yeah, why so, we decided the word, the F word was a bad word, but the word sock is not. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, and these and these people went ahead and I, I, you know, whoever works at the FCC, I guess I don't know. And then that gets associated with everything else because 
we all consume that media, right? Whether it be radio, whether it be television, you know, now we have the internet, right. all those different things, right? And so if it's already been labeled a quote unquote bad word by somebody else, by this overarching group that everybody has some sort of connection to, then that's just going to kind of trickle down, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think regardless then perhaps where the challenge is coming in for me then is less about the origin of these words because we started looking that up too, right? And so I could say, okay, so these words are Germanic or Old French or British. Old English, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. So when we start thinking about English words that are, you know, bollocks and things that don't mean anything to us in, in our you know, language, but are an absolute swear in those in those languages and vice versa, right? There's things that aren't a swear word to them, but are to us. Mm -hmm. And it's more the intent, I think, in how they're used then and how intentional we are about communicating. And so I was reading here about recorded conversations. There was a study done about recorded conversations and mm -hmm. taking um, like average the like in a day a person, and I know we, we want to maybe refute this, but this study suggested that on an average day, a person speaks roughly 80 to 90 unique words. Hmm. So we say a lot of the same words. I'm notorious for repeating myself. And so I say- Don't millions. you hate it? I know, right? 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 I'm just kidding. I'll stop. <laughs> um, edit half of those out. And in those words, so let's say it's a unique 80 to 90 words and they're- accurate in that count about a half a percent to almost one percent of all of those words are curse words and then in comparison make up what makes up about one percent of our spoken words is first person plural pronouns so the we the us the our and so if you start thinking about how many words we say one percent of those words are those filler words we us our versus like a connector word and then it says, on average, about half a percent are swear words. However, that usage can vary all the way up to 3.5% of the words. Love it. And I was like, well, I know who that is. That's T all day long. Outliers. <laughs> Outliers. But if you think about that, 3.5% and those are Love all it. unique words, you must know mm -hmm. a lot of swear words. <laughs> You're probably saying swear words that I didn't even know was a swear. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing that was also found in that study, too, right, from the Cleveland Clinic is they're trying to connect intelligence and swearing. Right. And they discovered that people that had a broader vocabulary in general also knew more swear words. Yeah. Yeah. I can so say that's they're probably like, probably very true. <laughs> right. So and, I, and so I guess there's a lot of debate whether that is an accurate assessment of intelligence, right? And, but there's plenty of other studies that have kind of followed suit and looked into this more, uh, you know, per our research, right? Per all that research we've done. Well, and again, only because it's been super personal. This isn't the first time I've been challenged to not swear, but here's what I'll say. Back to intent. The last time I was challenged to put my colorful language in check, I didn't like the intent of the person that was telling me that. I didn't think that it was a justifiable reason that was being provided to me to challenge me and my language. And so it really did absolutely motivate me to go and pull up all of those studies. And one of them was also about how neurologists and psychologists over at UCLA doing Alzheimer's research had suggested that um, swearing was helping them differentiate between Alzheimer's and um, frontotemporal dementia. And that I think one of the neurologists in that study had noted that despite the loss of language due to the damage in language areas, patients were still often able to swear. And so they were doing a whole study on where swearing and the relationship with that from a, you know, an expressive standpoint must have been coming from because it was still allowing people to be expressive even when there had been damage to the language areas of their brain. So then it was suggested that maybe swearing is really important because we have to be able to express ourselves as humans, or at least it's really psychologically important. And people who might not be able to use, you know, this 
broad and intelligent English language that we might have as a vocabulary could at least still swear. <laughs> I thought that was kind of fascinating. I can speak from firsthand experience that, yes, Alzheimer's and dementia patients love to let it rip. Yeah. Um, and my English word of the week is chuffed, but it's not a swear word. It's, it's uh, like a happy or delighted. <laughs> Wait, repeat the word for us all? Chuffed. <laughs> C-H-U-F-F-E-D. <laughs> well then, okay. So this this also brings me when we start thinking about Alzheimer's and dementia and you were talking about that. And I know you have some experience working in um, like nursing homes and such and you were talking about people just letting it rip. I think there's that other connotation that we have with say Tourette's, right? So Tourette syndrome is one of those things that we immediately characterize as people just like being obscene and yelling whatever they want and why there seems to be an association that Tourette's patients in particular yell obscenities. And it's actually, it's not in all Tourette's syndrome patients or people who have Tourette's syndrome, but it is, I believe, and they say approximately 10% that involuntary swearing or the involuntary utterance of obscene words or those that are socially inappropriate is a thing. Like it's called, oh, I don't even know how to say the word, coprolalia. Coprolalia? I should have had the, commu the you didn't, computer yeah, explain I was gonna, it to us first or say, pronounce right. it. Right. You didn't practice this I didn't practice this one, T. I was too busy not swearing. Um, <laughs> but yes, that is, uh, it's so just so we can clear the record, people with Tourette's syndrome are not just willy-nilly, to use safe's word, freely swearing, only about 10% of them are. <laughs> right, not everybody is the guy from Boondock Saints. <laughs> there you go. Coprolalia? Yeah. Oh, Coprolalia, she says. There you go, Coprolalia. there you go. Coprolalia, yeah, so Coprolalia uh -huh. Is the involuntary Beautiful. swearing or involuntary utterance? So this is this is maybe a good segue to me because this comes back to: Do we have an issue with the words themselves? You know, like I think you and I have already talked about that. From a we could talk about the origin. We could you know beat it so far down to really these are just four more letters writing a word. And every why is sock not? A bad word but you know other words are well and that's an instance of it right there you know i mean you just said we could beat it down it's yeah. just like I, I i i could beat it all day long dick you know <laughs> and, and now some suddenly people you just made that the... derogatory didn't you uh, right and we also exactly. said that that's right There's exactly like all those words that you know george carlin reminded us that we're not allowed to use and i know we have some other examples um that have reminded us of words we're not allowed to use and yet i could be even more offensive using words oh, that yeah. are acceptable until I put them in oh. a sentence together and suddenly oh, they're yeah. more terrible, right? Oh, they're the worst. They're the worst. And But here's what I'll say to that. If I come back to the challenge upon me, the first time, or not the first time, but the last time I had been challenged to clean up my language, if you will, I um, I said, right, I didn't feel like the um, motivation behind that ask or the intent behind that ask was something that I felt motivated by because it really felt like it was for some maybe socialized reason that was restricting to me. And so that's where I came back to. These are all four letters. Don't tell me these words are any different. I have a huge vocabulary and I'm expressive and my blah, 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 right? All those studies we talked about. So most recently, when it was brought to me as a, a challenge, and it was pretty specific that what I felt anyways was being suggested to me or being kind of pointed out was back to that idiomatic swearing. So using it for no other particular purpose other than filler words. I started thinking about that and going, oh, they do just fly out of my mouth because I'm being unintentional. And for anyone who listened to our last podcast, we are committing ourselves most recently to being intentional in our actions. And I think use of words is another one of those things that we want to be intentional about how we communicate because we care yep. about our audiences. At least I do, T. I know you and I have a discrepancy there of I care if our audience wants to hear us. And if that means I swear less, 
you might not care. I love <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck. I love the fans. I love the fans. My <laughs> whole thing is just there's some things that we're going to discuss that are going to just turn some people off, right? Sure. Yeah. And so in those instances, that's why we have hundreds of episodes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, not hundreds, but we're you know we're 130 ahead. something, right? Yeah, exactly. That's why we talk about so many different things. There's a variety of things. If you don't like this episode. If you don't like me saying the word fuck on this episode or discussing the word shit or, you know what, Dick? <clears throat> I think my friends uh, from Blink-182 yeah. actually said it best. Okay. And they were inspired by the late, great George Carlin. So I believe we've got some audio queued up from them. Uh, you, you, mind, you mind I just letting it rip for me? to our listeners. For anyone who needs this to take a one-minute break. <laughs> this is for me. Yeah, disclaimer. If you want to take a one-minute break from any profanity, you can just go ahead and skip past this part. But, <laughs> yeah. Let it go. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits, fart, turn, and twat. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits, fart, turn, and It's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. It is kind of catchy. I fucked your mom. So if any of that makes you <laughs> right, I mean right, right, right. So if any of that makes you feel uncomfortable, it's like. Again, why does it make you feel uncomfortable? So I these, think that's, these that's people... a good conversation, but I think it's less about uncomfortability. I mean, I want everyone to feel uncomfortable at some point, right? Well, and that's why we do this, is yeah. to try to get you to think outside of the box that you're presented every single day, yeah. right? We're inspiring you to reach higher here, people. Try <laughs> and to so think. I will say that back to the challenge that was presented to me was actually to get me out of my box too, right? Because my box was pretty standardized in the I know when I'm I know when it's socially unacceptable, say in my professional setting, to not be swearing. I know when it's also very socially acceptable and expected of me. And I don't think I'm here to say that. There's no situation that utilizing that language that is part of my vast vocabulary is wrong or unnecessary. I think it's more about being intentional because, again, right. I don't want Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, but if I get either of them, I definitely want to have some words where I can still express myself when the rest of my language goes away. <laughs> That's right where I'm at, too. I'm fried, baby. <laughs> So we're just prepping for the fact that we could lose language areas in our brain, right? Exactly. So if I can only communicate to you through the, I think they have 10 words on that song. I think they threw in a few extra just to, for the catchiness. <laughs> yeah. But if that's all I can express to you, then it's like, it's like Morse code or like some, you know, some sort of sign language, you know, like this yeah. is it. You got to break the, break the code. No, <laughs> this I'm... is all this guy's got left. This is all he's got left. <laughs> but even at that point, then that feels m more intelligent as a challenge in and of itself than that idiomatic swearing that is lazy, that is unintentional, that doesn't make us think or be thoughtful. So when mm -hmm. I use those words now, which again, back to that challenge, my intent is not to. And so being mm -hmm. intentional, have there been moments though where one, I've completely slipped up and done it. Yeah. And that's usually either cathartic or emphatic when I'm saying it, but not, and mm -hmm. I'm forgiving of myself for it. But there's also going to be those times where those words do have context. And yeah. I'd much rather be using those words when they do have context and are powerful and are intentional and do convey the message that needs to be conveyed. Because I kind of think I was missing that by being so idiomatic in my swearing that everyone was just so used to the F word coming out every other word. It kind of gets lost then. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where I was thinking about so this person challenged you to not swear, right? And so that makes me think, what if you were to challenge them oppositely, not to swear more, but to understand that there are instances where 
it is definitely the preferred nomenclature. Oh, right? sure. Yeah. Like if I'm going to Pound Town, <laughs> like <laughs> I need you to just tell me that you want me to fuck that ass, right? Okay, like, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what minute are we at? We already told everybody that we were about to get a little derogatory with that song, which I also think. Oh, the that song but is we're really way funny. past that. I think we're the song is really that. funny because it's back to that like really numbingness, right? It kind of just makes it like okay, it's just fun jingle, right? But mm -hmm. no, back to when <laughs> Jingle. So they also have a song called Fuck a Dog for anybody okay, that's interested. Okay. <laughs> but no, in all honesty, this comes back to those areas. And I will say this about the the person in my life that challenged me. It is by no means that the challenge came from someone who doesn't have a similar struggle. Well, I think mine I think my usage was far more prevalent right 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 but right it's a it's a mutual challenge he, I understand, it was a mutual yeah. challenge he and i both did but i will also say that um because i think it's an interesting challenge but i'll also say that where i've probably struggled the most but nonetheless struggle is good and the challenge has been good has been in those intimate settings that you were referencing where Mm. My first response is to use particular words in those situations. And I've found myself being incredibly thoughtful even then. And I can't hate on yes. that. It doesn't yes. mean that the words don't come out of my mouth. Put that your are... penis in my <laughs> anus. <Yeah. laughs> but, Dick. Okay. Dick. but at least I'm being thoughtful in those moments. <laughs> And so, <laughs> I am not telling you what words come out of my mouth during that period of time. <laughs> but I will say oh that perhaps those words have a context that is appropriate oh, during Jesus. intimate settings. Oh my God. Oh. oh, the day that I fucking hear that in bed. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I am so. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. All so right. again, there is. I'm here. There's I'm certainly good. times where, where profanity may have a more contextual <laughs> place or setting. <laughs> I'm going immediately flaxen. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Back to intentionality. I was just sharing my thought process in that moment. Like, uh, well, technically, uh, I don't say those words anymore, but I really oh want to say those words. And I would suggest that in that situation, they're very cathartic and emphatic. Definitely not idiomatic by any means. Oh, no. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. I feel like I'm more on the emphatic end of things. Yes, I mean, are. obviously, definitely idiomatic as well. But I love just screaming. <laughs> I just love yeah. screaming. Fuck. <laughs> and that is why. Well, here, here, here. See, I, and that's back to Blink-182. Perfect example. When I went to see them in, I believe it was 2016. Yeah. They're playing with a day to remember, and they come out playing the song Feeling This, right? Mm. And as the curtain drops in flames behind Travis Barker, mm. one letter at a time, yeah. F-U-C-K. Mm -hmm. So they're playing the song while the word fuck is in flames behind them, right? Right. So I'm I'm out here screaming it. They've got it in flames. Travis Barker, anytime he posts on his Instagram from his like house studio, I guess it is. I don't know what, you know, I don't know his house layout or whatever, but you can see it. He has it behind him. He has the, the letters behind him. He kept them. <laughs> so they're Are in it. Yeah. Sure anytime. That those weren't just an acronym for something like, like friend you can keep. Because T, no, you're a friend cause... I can keep, only that doesn't spell the right word. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, the, what friend, are we using? Were we 12? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a Victoria you? Monet song. <laughs> I encourage Jesus, everyone to listen to it. Terrible. It's a great song. 
Oh, it's a fantastic song. <laughs> Stop. Well, you know, pick your poison. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I challenged you to watch your language, and so instead, okay, okay. <laughs> so I think that's been my uh, conclusion after this exploration of profanity and really in taking this challenge in every moment, <laughs> intimate or otherwise. <laughs> if nothing else, I'm putting a lot of thought into it always. Has been um, just being more in lick my grundle about what comes out of my <laughs> mouth, and therefore more intelligible. I think. Is Grundle more appropriate than taint? <laughs> There's so many good questions after this conversation, but what I definitely shouldn't say in bed. <laughs> oh I'm taking God, notes. I'm so See, sorry. I'm taking notes. What is the least sexy thing I can say, clearly? <laughs> wow. wow, that is fantastic. But that no, I think phenomenal. this is the beauty of language and these conversations is definitely going, okay, well, the challenge itself might have had us both looking at each other and going, nah, F that. I think it has definitely put me in a, in a headspace to be very thoughtful about when I do swear at you. So just know when I do swear at you, I'm going to mother effing mean it. Well... I thoroughly expect that next time I see you. So it doesn't, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's not going to surprise me. Yeah. No That's surprises fair. there. Well, T, I want to say thank you to you for entertaining my challenge and this conversation about profanity. And I want to thank you and the listeners for putting up with my shenanigans for another episode. <laughs> if you care to follow us, you can find me on Twitter at CTS Terry. You can find Dick on Twitter at I'm Dick Francisco. You can find her on Instagram at The Dick Francisco. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever podcasts are available, including Google, Apple, Spotify, by searching for the Catch the Sky podcast. And until next week... Piss off, wankers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I meant to say, fuck you, San Diego. Oh, my God. Sorry. Oh, no. I'm just having a little fun with you. Thank you for listening. And until next week, keep trying to catch this guy. Bye.